Well, we punched all that rotten, <laughs> rotten bark off. And now we can really see what's going on with the timbers that are up there, which they look mostly in good shape. There's a little bit of, of wet bark. We're gonna strip that kind of stuff off. Uh, but I, it, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So you can kind of see with the shingles, if the roof sticks out in the middle instead of at the ends, the roof is gonna do this. The shingles are gonna put a gap. But if we make the bottom and the top a little bit higher, then the shingles will naturally hook or sort of set up against each other so there's no gap for wind and rain to come in from the bottom side. So just a little bit of change. The bark, it just totally contoured to the roof. That was no problem at all. But uh, now that we have these rigid shingles that we're gonna have to work with, we'll just have to do a little adjustment. I am in. Well, we've replaced that top purlin, the ridge pole on the cabin, so that we would have some extra height there, so that the shingles will all line up like we need to. We didn't want to waste that log, so we split that in half, and we'll use that on these bottom edges to, again, raise the, the bottom edge just a little bit so that all these shingles line up perfectly. Now, what about shingles? So the shingles we're going to be working with here are white oak shingles. In this area, cedar shakes, which is what you might think would be the typical thing. Well, cedar doesn't grow here at all. Basically in this area, white oak would be the, the typical choice, uh, log choice to work with. I've got a short cutoff stump of white oak here to work with. And here's the hard part about the particular shakes, shingles that we need to make for this cabin. You can see behind me that the purlins are spaced at about 18 inches apart. That worked perfect for the bark, but to do a shake, that means it needs to be at least twice that long. So we need 36 inch long shingles or shakes. That's a long, uh, that's a long shake. And so we need to 
to split out very, very long shingles on this. Uh, we've got the white oak log here that we're going to be working with, and we need axes. We need wedges. Uh, that'll get us to, to uh, be able to get down to the quarter mark. And then we can start to bring in the fro to start splitting shakes out from those quarters. We'll see. I think it's going to be tough. They're going to be hard. For our cabin roof, we wanted to use period correct nails. Some of these nails we made right here in the blacksmith shop, right here on the homestead. Making a nail is easy. All you have to do is taper out the end and then take this handy nail header and after you cut it, you stick it in the header and you can hammer the head over on the end of it. So making nails is a very repetitive process, very time consuming and it seems like you don't get anywhere, but it is so satisfying being able to make the hardware that you need right here on the homestead. We have our shingles all the way up to the ridge on both sides, all the way down. The next step is to do the peak, and this is to seal everything up. And we'll have the short ones here, and these are to go across our gaps there so that we have a completely sealed up. And then the long ones will do the same, and they'll cover all the gaps and completely seal it up. But it's going to hang over, 
And what that does is that creates a little shelf area in there that no water can get into. And we do this on a north or a west facing side of the roof. In our area of the country, that's where we get a lot of the prevailing winds and storms, especially in the winter. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our turkey wing, is what we call this, is going in the right direction so that it blows all that wind and rain off of it and keeps it nice and dry. This is, this is the final stretch. Once we get this done, our roof will be done and ready to go.